morning. It is July 11th, 2024. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We serve an awesome, wonderful Lord God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, that loves us so much more than we can imagine. He is sovereign. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And He is the reason we are here this morning opening up His Word, learning more about Him, about our walk with Him, because of the Spirit of God that dwells in us. Oh, we can have an understanding of this Word. You have tuned in to Matt and Randy in the morning. We're here to encourage you in the Word so that you can be strong in the faith and live victoriously in Christ. That is where true victory is found. When you know that you are in right relationship with God Almighty, who holds everything in its perfect order, that is the reason why this earth rotates just right, that our solar system works the way that it works, the ocean only goes as far as it goes. It's because God Almighty has everything under His control. And when you give your life to Jesus Christ and He becomes Lord and Savior of your life, and you allow Him to become Lord of your life, you know, the Word of God says that He knows every hair on our head. I mean, he created you unique, special. You have talents and things that God has just for you to do while we're here. In our body, we have all kinds of different organs. Everything has its own place. And it all needs to work together for the body to function properly. If we all do the same thing, there's going to be things left behind. Think of a general manager of a hotel. Yes, he manages the hotel, but if there's no housekeepers to keep the place looking clean, <laughs> his job would never get done. If there wouldn't be bellmen, hospitality, groundskeepers, it takes all of us working together. One position is just as important as another. In the body of Christ, we all have something God has called us to do. It might be that your position right now is just writing little notes, little letters to people to encourage them. Prayer. Prayer. Intercession. Intercessor. Praying at home when nobody else sees you. It might be that you are the worshiper. You might be at home just singing to the Lord, worshiping to the Lord. Because that's something that is important. Your worship brings that presence of God. Don't think that you're not important because you're not up front where people see you. God sees you and that's what's important. We talked about the widow's might. You know, people didn't pay any attention to her. Oh, but the King of Kings and Lord of Lords did. And he makes sure he made sure that people notice her. We're still reading about her thousands of years later. See, God knows you. He knows your heart. Don't worry about what others think. Live your life for Jesus Christ. Make up your mind that nothing is going to separate you from that love. Today I want to continue where I had left off yesterday. We had talked about you know, that, that blessed assurance, the contentment that we have in Christ. I'm going to now pick up in Philippians 4. For Actually, Philippians 4, 10. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we get into your word, I ask, Holy Spirit, that you teach us, guide us, instruct us in the ways of righteousness. I ask that we have the might of Christ, ears to hear what you want to teach us today. Let our hearts be willing to say yes to you, O Lord whether it's correction or instruction, whatever it might be, Lord. May we say yes to what you want. In Jesus' name, amen. Philippians 4.10, Peter says, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, 
that now at last you care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am in to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ. Some versions say through Him who strengthens me. See, whatever situation God allows in your life, you need to know that just because it may be rough doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. But it does mean that you're going to make it through that situation because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. It's not about this temporal world. God is preparing us for eternity, for the things that he is preparing for us in glory. Hebrews 13.5 says, Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? See, when we keep our eyes focused on Jesus, and don't worry about how little or how much we have. And we trust Him. You know, if your car is an older car, it gets you from point A to point B the way you need to get there. What's the difference? It's got four wheels. That brand new Corvette or Mustang, you know, or Jeep Wrangler, Rubicon, 2024. Yours is still going to get you from point A to point B. Except you're not going to have the bills. It's okay. Doesn't matter. You focus on God. Let the Lord be your joy. Let that be the joy of your salvation. Have faith in Him. Know that He is preparing a place for you in a place where streets are made of gold. What we cherish so much here, streets are made of over there. I mean, it is so far beyond our understanding, the things that God is preparing for those who, who love Him. It goes on in Romans 5, 1 through... i got to read really fast. Romans 5, 1 through 5 says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith, into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. What promises, what words of encouragement these are to us. Romans 8, 31 through 39 says, again, I'm thinking of assurance that we have. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with us, with him also freely give us all things who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Think about that. God Almighty Jesus is making intercession for you before the Father. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, For your sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. That's how the world sees us. 
yet. Verse 37, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. And because of that, we can keep a praise song in our heart, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. And if you have not asked Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior of your life, don't wait any longer. It doesn't have to be a formal thing. Just call out to God. Say, God, I want to know Jesus. Jesus, reveal yourself to me. Forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for the things that I've done. Forgive me for my pride. You know, forgive me for the thoughts that are wrong in my mind. Lord, cleanse me. Wash me in the precious blood of Jesus. I want to know you more and more. God hears that prayer. God hears that heart's cry. And he says that as far as the east is from the west, our sins are forgiven when we trust Jesus Christ. You have to believe he is the Son of God. He was crucified and buried crucified for our sins. The penalty of our sins is death and he, he bore that on the cross. He was buried, but he rose again on that third day to prove to us he truly is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And you can have that victory. You can have that joy and that peace that passes all understanding because of what Jesus did for you. Don't wait any longer. Call on him now. We'll see you tomorrow morning.